Now, how do we know if a solution is acidic or basic? We can't possibly always stick our fingers inside there and feel whether it's soapy or not, or taste to see whether it's sour or bitter. And even if we could, it's not very quantitative. There must be an easier way. So there exists a special type of compound called indicators, specifically acid-base indicators, because they tell you whether a solution is acidic or basic, or not at all. How do indicators work? Let's look at one of the favorite indicators of all time, phenolphthalein. It is colorless in acid and violet in base as we know it. Now here is where we understand how it works. Now all indicators are weak acids. That means they dissociate in water to form the conjugate base and hydronium. Naturally, that means they have two interchangeable forms. And what is cool is that these two forms have different colors. If we have a little of this compound present inside the solution, depending on which form is present, we will be able to observe different colors. How then do we make it exhibit either the undissociated acid or the conjugate base? Here is where we apply equilibrium concepts. If we wanted more of the undissociated acid form, then we must have a high concentration of hydronium in the solution so that we can push the equilibrium backwards by Le Chatelier's principle. That would mean an acidic solution if we wanted more of the dissociated form, then we must reduce the concentration of hydronium ions and shift the equilibrium forward, and this happens in a basic solution. So although both forms are always present, but because one form is in a much higher concentration than the other, the solution only appears a certain color. Going back to the example of phenolphthalein, phenolphthalein in its undissociated form is colorless. That's why in acid we see that there is no color. The conjugate base, however, is pink or violet, and so in basic solution, it has a pink color. So what is the pH at which it changes color? That must be the point where the concentration of indicator and its conjugate base are equal. Let's use another example, litmus indicator. If we looked at the equilibrium expression for the litmus indicator, which is a weak acid, you get KIN equals to this. HL represents the undissociated form of litmus, and L- minus represents the conjugate base. So when the concentrations of indicator and its conjugate base are equal, hydronium equals to KIN. And if we took a negative log of both sides, pH equals to PKIN. And at this point, the color of the solution will be a mix between both forms. So phenolphthalein, when it is light, it, for, for phenolphthalein, it is light pink. For litmus, it is red and blue, giving us purple. How much must the concentrations of the indicator and the conjugate base change before we see one color and not the other? In general, we say that one concentration needs to be at least 10 times of the other to form a sharp enough color change that our eye can see. So for litmus, if HL over L- minus is larger than 10, the solution appears red because the undissociated acid form is red. If the HL over L is smaller than 0.1, then the solution appears blue. You can of course calculate the pH at which these two occurred using the equilibrium expressions. The pH range over which the color of the indicator changes is called the indicator pH range. Here are some. Here are the pH ranges of some of the more common indicators. You don't need to memorize this at the moment, as we will go through this again in the next few checkpoints.